Oh, yeah. There we go. What did I call it? 6.2. Solving systems of equations. We've seen a system of linear equations. Remember, linear is just x to the first. So if you look in any of the equations, you only see x to the first. We solve linear inequalities. We did that too with the shading. Um, and now we're going to be combining linear with quadratic, but we're doing it incrementally. We're going to do a linear and a quadratic, and then we'll be moving on to nothing but quadratic soon enough. So a linear quadratic system is basically a line and a parabola, a line and a parabola. And if we say that the solutions are going to manifest as intersection points, then you can see by these three diagrams exactly how many possible solutions we can have at any given time, right? So for instance, if the red graph is the quadratic and the blue graph is the linear, how many times do these two graphs intersect? This one right here. Zero. zero. So we're going to put the number of intersection points as zero because that's the same. The number of solutions is the same as the intersection points. Uh, what quadrant? Well, we'll just put NA here and NA. So it could be that they don't intersect. It could be that this line comes in and glances off at a single point. We call this point the tangent point. And that's a very important point in calculus. But if it's a tangent point, it touches at one point. Touches. Oh, you did. Good. So I like to, when, when, the, when, the, when the line comes up and glances off the graph, I like to, because it just kisses it right there, you know? And it's gone. I know, I've done that several times. Yeah, 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 I know. I practice with my wife, too. It helps. It helps, yeah. 25 years. It's been 25 years. Yeah, of... of. And she says, go away, I get it. How many points of intersection do we have on the third diagram? Three. So I didn't finish this up. This is this three. Y'all said three, I went with it. This is two. This is one. What quadrant is our solution in over here on, on the, the fourth one? We'll write it as a Roman numeral without serifs. Oh, there you go, with serifs. And then the solution, what's the actual solution? We really want to list it as an ordered pair. So it's two comma negative three, negative three. two comma negative three. It's very, very important that you write your answer as an ordered pair. Okay. And then when it intersects twice, it intersects twice. There's two solutions. Yeah. First and second. So one and two. And then what are the actual values? Well, eh, negative a half. One and a half, let's write it. Negative one half, positive one and a half, which is three halves, ish, right? Ish. And then this other one over here, oh, it doesn't look like 1.5. It looks like a 1.6 to me. <laughs> Comma, and then what does the Y value look like? 3.6. 3.6 also, I'll go with that. Yeah, that looks good to me. So, that's, that's important to understand before we start, that the systems that we're solving, which are part line, part quadratic, they can have zero, one, or two solutions. Most of them are going to have two solutions, but we need to be kind of have our eyes open for the other two scenarios. All right, let's try it out. Solve the linear quadratic system algebraically. Check the reasonableness of your answers. Okay. Now, here's how we notice it. We have a quadratic. Whoa. I hate when I do that. There we go. Quadratic and linear, right? X to the first. This is a quadratic linear function system. The way that we solve this is we solve both equations. It's written up here pretty nicely. Um, step one, solve both equations for the variable that's linear in both of the equations. Linear in both, that means to the first power. So it looks like this is y to the first and y to the first, see that? Okay, good. So now we need to solve them both for y. The first one is already solved for y, I'll just rewrite it. x squared minus five x plus seven. The second one is not solved for y. 
If you want to go off to the side and solve it for y so that you have to do the other one every time, that would be smart. 2x minus y equals negative 1. Okay, so I'm going to bring that across and get negative 2x minus 1. There's tons of negatives, aren't there? I'm going to multiply by negative, negative, negative. If I multiply through by a negative, that gives me positive y equals positive 2x, positive 1. And that's what I'm bringing in right here. Y equals 2x plus 1. All right, so step one is done, right? That's easy. Step two, we're going to set those two equal to each other. That's what it says up here if you want to read it. Set the two expressions equal to each other. Okay, so we got this down here. We got x squared minus 5x plus 7 equals 2x plus 1. Yay, you say, right? I got a single equation with a single variable. We can solve these. Now, how are we going to solve this? It's going to involve probably any method that we've learned in any of the sections this year. I've got a squared term, and I got a couple of non squared terms, and I have constants. So that's going to kind of end up looking like a trinomial, like ax squared plus bx plus c, right? So let's go ahead and collect the terms in decreasing order, and we'll bring everything across. 2x comes over. Can you combine them in your head while you bring it over? Negative 5x minus the 2x is minus 7x. Yeah, if you can't do that, just do more steps. Uh, and then bring the 1 across, it becomes minus, so we get plus 6, and that equals 0. All right, so we know when there's two variables, x squared and x, that we get it equal to 0. And now we factor it, or we try to factor it. We try to factor it. If it doesn't factor, guess what? We have the quadratic formula, or we complete the square, whatever we want to do. Does this one factor? I'm going to try it first. Let's see. It's got to be an x and got to be an x. It's factors of 6 that add up to negative 7. 6 and 1. Are they both positive, both negative, one of each? They're both negative, right? It must be genetic. They're both negative. Yeah. yeah. Be positive. Be happy. Yeah. Well, from here, you could set each of them equal to zero, or you could just rattle off the two roots. What are the roots? X equals what? Yeah, there you go. Now, if you want to show the extra steps, x minus 6 equals 0, that's fine. Otherwise, just, just take the roots. And uh, the last thing it says, let's see what it says. Uh, write your solutions as ordered pairs. Okay. All right. We could do that. So there's two solutions. So how many y values do we need to find? Two. I got to plug these back into either one of these. Which one is easier? I think the bottom one's easier, yeah. So let's let's just do, let's do the bottom one. X equals six. I get uh, y equals two times six plus one, which is thirteen. So this ordered pair is. There's a lot of things to remember to do here. That's why there's instructions up there. Six comma thirteen. That's the first point of tangency. Or the first point of this is called the secant point of secancy actually. And then when x equals 1, we get y equals 2 times 1 plus 1, which is 3. And so we get the other ordered pair, which is 1 comma 3. And now did we answer the freaking question? We sure did. Yeah, we sure did. This parabola and this line intersect twice. And now we know exactly where. So like if this was... Uh, if this were like, um, if we had a comet in space that was traveling along that circular path, and then we had we had like a another comet that was heading this direction on a line, we would know that they would intersect, boom, right there. And that would be the point where they might explode if they got there at the same time. So I'm not saying two comets are going to collide, but, you know, you can apply it to anything else, really. Uh, wanting to know where these two things meet up, where they intersect. That's what we're finding. We're finding the points of intersection. Okay. How'd that go for the first one?
Nick's a select? Yes. How do I get a negative one? Oh, well, because it's it's a foil. When we foil, the, the, the last give you negative six times negative one, which is positive six. And then when you do the inside, negative six X, and you do the outside, which is negative X, negative six X minus X is negative seven X. Make sense? So it's foil. When in doubt, you can always go off to the side and foil it out. When in doubt, dance it out. When in doubt... Shout it out. Okay. Number two. Why don't y'all try this one on your own? It has a little has a little x plus one squared thing in there that y'all have to deal with, but at least y'all can get started on it. Just go through go through the same steps that we did right here. You can refer back to them. Uh, step one, two, three, four. I'll give you a few minutes and then uh, we'll go over it. Solve for y, set them equal. Solve for y, set them equal. Solve for y, set them equal. Um, when you set them equal to each other, you're going to need to collect like terms because that has an X in it. So guess what you're going to have to do with this? You're going to have to expand it out. Oh, square it first. Yeah, E before M, right? Answer. Yes. Should you square it and then put it into... That's correct. Yeah, because you got to do the square before you do the multiplication. Because that's exponential. That's E, and this is M. X plus 1 quantity squared, by the way, is not X squared plus 1. There's a middle term there when you foil it out side by side with itself. You get X squared plus 2X plus 1. When you when you expand this out, it's not just x squared plus so one squared. The then the four gets distributed after the fact. Okay. Oh, yeah. So okay. I'll start. I'll start and catch up with y'all. Uh, step one is to solve for the linear term in both the linear uh, linear uh, variable, which is y. It's already solved for y in the bottom one. All I need to do in the top is bring the 2x across and becomes negative 2x minus 2. All right, so there it is. That's the first step. I solved them both for y. Now we set them both equal to each other. Minus 2x minus 2 equals negative 4 times x plus 1 squared plus 2. Now the problem is, is you don't have just numbers on this side. You have x's that you need to get together. There's an x and there's an x. The only way to solve this and get them together is to liberate them, set them free. And to do that, we have to expand. Now, this is an exponent of 2, and you have to expand that before you would multiply with the negative 4. Because your dear Aunt Sally says, PEMDAS, we're doing this here, and this is here. Okay, So I'm going to do this off to the side. x plus 1 squared. That's x plus 1 times x plus 1. When you square it, you get x squared plus x plus x plus 1. And you combine, you get x squared plus 2x plus 1. And that's what it's equal to. 
I just foiled it out. That's all I did. I wrote it side by side off to the side of my workbench. I foiled it out and combined like terms. Now, there is a quick way to remember how to square any binomial. Square, multiply, and double, and square. Square, multiply, double, square. Square, multiply, double, square. Watch what happens. Square the first, that's square, x squared. Multiply these two and you get x times 1 is x. Double that, you get 2x, that's your middle term. And then square the last to get your last one. So square, multiply, double, square. What people usually do is they do square, square. They square the first, square the last, and they don't do the middle part, right, which is multiply and double. Or you can just foil it like that. All right, I think what I'm going to do before I even bring that in, I have to, I have to distribute the negative 4. I'll just do it in the problem. Negative 2x minus 2, that stays over there. Minus 4 parentheses, x squared plus 2x plus 1 plus 2. So that's just expanding it. And now I can distribute the negative 4. So I get negative 4x squared minus 8x minus 4 plus 2. I love all this algebra stuff, plugging in, distributing, factoring. It's good stuff, right? It's like Wasselfest, but better. That was a bad analogy, I guess. Oh, with I know his with his first girlfriend or with his with Callie. It was his first kiss with Callie. He's he's kissed his mom several times. Well, like on the cheek. Yeah, like hi mom, thanks for giving birth to me. We have a squared term, a non-squared term, and a constant, just like in the first one now. So now is where we have to say, I have to get everything on one side and set it equal to what? Zero. Zero. So I'm going to bring everything over to the left side. So I get positive 4x squared, and I'm writing with the highlighter, and I'm just going to go for it. When I bring the 8x across, I get 8x minus 2, that's plus 6x. And then over here, before I send them, I get negative 2, yes? Oh, that's fine. That's fine. But that's going to be a negative 2, and that's a negative 2, and those cancel, and it equals 0. There's no constant. That kind of makes it a little bit easier to, to solve because now to factor it, we don't factor it as two binomials. Now we just pull out a common factor, which is the first rule of factoring. So that's going to be 2x, and that leaves us a 2x plus 3. Still equal to 0. Yeah, the first rule of factoring is to factor out common factors. And you'll do that when you don't have a constant, when both terms have x in it. Everyone good with the factoring? Yeah. Like redistribute and convince yourself. I pulled the two out as well. Okay, now from here, you might be able to figure out the answers. What's the first solution? That comes from this. Well, let's let's do this. If you can't see it, you, you set them each equal to zero. Either 2x equals zero or 2x plus 3 equals zero. Oh. All right, feel free to do that, which means x equals zero or x equals negative 3 halves. Yeah. Whoa. We found the, we found the solutions. Now all we need to find is the y values, right? Which one are we going to plug into to find the y values? I like negative 2x minus 2. And instead of putting x equals 0 colon, you could just say y of 0. That's like f of 0. You get 0 minus 2 is negative 2. And then y of negative 3 halves. Oh, this is not going to be fun. Negative 3 halves times 2 is positive 3. 3 minus 2 is 1. Actually, that worked out nicely. So the ordered pairs are 0, negative 2, and negative 1.5, negative 3 halves, comma 1. It is a lot of math, but at least it's fun and exciting and invigorating, and we're burning, burning more calories doing math than we are if we were just banging our head up against the wall. Yeah, yeah, I'm positive. Because banging your head up against the wall burns 150 calories an hour, an hour, or $300, 300 calories every two hours. 
And after three hours, no one knows how many calories you burn because no one's made it that long yet. But doing math burns more calories than that. You know why? Because burning math, doing math burns burns all kinds of brain brain ca calories, not cells. The cells stay. Right? We're not losing brain cells. That's like if you smoke dope. Don't do that. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I subtracted the three and then I divided three by the two. Okay. Yeah. And then how, how did you get two x equals zero? I mean, how did you get x equals zero from two x? From this one? Go down. This one? No, no, no. no down. Uh, this one? Oh, I just divided by two. Zero divided by two is zero. It's right here in front. I just set this equal to zero and this equal to zero. I, this one? I, I factored out a 2x. Factored out to like redistribute. You get 4x squared plus 6x. Yeah. Any other questions? Yes. Oh, sorry. That's y of zero. This is not y times zero. This is like f of zero. F of negative three halves. Okay. It, it's, 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 I plugged it into the equation. The other way, the way that we did it earlier was this. We did, we said at x equals zero colon, we get y equals, uh, oh, okay. yeah, yeah. I just did it a little bit differently because we, we can use that. We can use that notation. But if that confuses you, I won't. So at x equals negative three halves, we get y equals. Okay, but I plugged it into I plugged them into this equation right here. You're probably going to want to plug them into your linear equation every time, just because you don't have to square something. Who likes squaring something when they don't have to? Come on, now's your chance. This is a safe this is a safe place. You can raise your hand. No one. See. Well, not even I enjoy that. I, I like, I, you know, I like being efficient because when you're efficient, you get done with the math problem more quickly and probably more accurately. And you know what you do with all that extra time that you saved being efficient? No, you don't do that. That's the one thing you don't do. Well, there's many things you don't do, but that's one of the things you don't do. No, you have time for more math problems. You have time for more math problems. That's a win-win situation. Let's try one more. And if you stay engaged and focused and wrap your head around this example, that's three examples you'll have. It should be easier when you try it on your own. Okay, we'll do this one together. Maybe I'll let you try the other one a little prematurely. Step one. Step one is really to identify what type of system it is. I have a x to the first and an x to the second. That means it's a linear and a quadratic. A linear and a quadratic. I need to solve for which variable? Why? And the answer to that is because it's the variable that's not squared in both terms. Okay. So uh, if you want to do that off to the side, you can. I think we could just go ahead and write it right here. Y equals is going to be a negative 3x plus 4. And you should be able to bring things across pretty easily, right? This 3x comes across. This 4 comes across. And when they do that, they change signs. The next one, if I bring the y across over here, I flip it around then, and I get 2x squared minus 20x plus 52. I brought the y over to the right-hand side, and then I flipped the whole thing around, just because I didn't want to have to move all those terms and multiply by a negative. Yeah. Right. Right, and they would, they would turn out to be this side anyway. Yeah. Yeah, I thought you were going to say then you flip, flip them off. I was like, no, only if they make you frustrated, right? What would you do if we were like, ugh. Like, ugh, I'd be like, I'd be like, get it, get it. Tell them how you feel. It's good. It's purging, right? It's a catharsis. It's a release. You're like, oh, and you walk away or you take some time out and then you come back to the problem and be like, I'm going to conquer you. I'm going to conquer you. 
You were designed to be conquered, and I was born to conquer. And that is not a good mix for both of us. You are going down, Mr. Problem. Now what? Set them equal to each other. other. Negative 3x plus 4 yeah. equals 2x squared minus 20x plus 52. And right now, that's just kind of soup, isn't it? Yeah. But we have a square term, and we have a non-square term, and we have a constant. So let's get everything on one side and set it equal to zero. Now, here's what I always check. Is my leading term on the side that it's currently on, is it positive? It's positive. So I'm not going to move it over to the left, which is where I want it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get everything on that side. I don't like leading with a negative, even though you. I will watch this. I'm going to leave that there and I'm going to bring these two across. Watch this. So I get 2x squared. I'm going to have a. Let's do this one first. If I take the 3x over here, it becomes what? Positive 3x. And what's negative 20 plus 3? Negative 17x. Okay. And then I'm going to bring the 4 across, and I'm going to combine it with the 52, but that becomes a minus 4. What's 52 minus 4? 48. Okay. And then I'm going to say that that equals 0 because I brought everything over to the right side. Now, here's what I said about flipping it around. All I'm going to do is take that equal 0 that's on that side, and I'm going to put equal 0 on this side. That works. Well, it's, I brought everything to the right-hand side, and it's currently a negative 20, which when I add 3 becomes a negative 17. Do you have different signs on all three of them? Here. Here's kind of a little I word of advice. If you have this, oh, wait, wait. if you have this, and you see that your leading coefficient is negative, don't fret. Just simply multiply both sides by negative 1. And guess what's going to happen? You're going to get that right there. You really don't want your leading coefficient to be a negative number. Okay, I'm just going to copy that and bring it down here. And now I will say, I don't like it equal to zero on the left. I like it equal to zero on the right. But anyway, this, this is a milestone. Just to get to this right here, you should feel pretty happy, pretty confident, pretty proud of yourself. And now we try to factor it. What's the first rule of factoring? Thank you. Common factor. I got a 2 in the front, that's even. I got a 48 in the back, that's even. I got a 17 in the middle. Why, that is not, that's not an even number. So I, I, can't, I can't factor nothing out, right? I can't factor anything out. So I can either try to factor it by guess and check, complete the square, quadratic formula, you want to do quadratic formula? Those numbers are kind of big, though, 48 and 17. Can you think of any factors of 48 that add up to 17? What are some factors of 48? Oh, two, 24 and 2. Look, let me show you how you can do this. If you come up with 24 and 2, half this one and double that one. You can keep doing that as long as they're even. That works. Half this one. And double this one. Yeah, no. no. Yeah. Half this one and double this one. Yeah, now I've got a three, so I'm out. As long as it's even, I can still do that. So look at all these combinations I can get. 16, 14, I can get 13, I can get 19. But can I get a 17 out of that? No. So you got to use the quadratic formula? Is that what you wanted to do? Okay. Oh, gosh. Well, completing the square is not going to be fun because 17 is not an even number. All right, let's just use the quadratic formula. X equals the opposite of B is positive 17, right? Because here's your A, here's your B, here's your C. It's still on the board back there, plus or minus the square root of B squared. That's positive 17 squared minus 4 times A times 
A is 2 times C is 48. All over 2 times 2. Wow. Now, remember the discriminant? Yes. This is it right here. What's 17 squared? 34? Let me see. Well, yeah, it is with parentheses. Well, because I know that when I square a negative, it's positive. Look, if you're going to put the negative in there, you got to put parentheses around it, which is like that. That's fine. All right, let's 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 see. Oh, she did? Two and eight nine. Okay, let's, let's go off to the side here. That's, that's 289 minus, let's see, 8 times 48. This is 384. What type of number is that? I have 289 minus 384. That's less than zero. That's a negative under the radical. Are we allowed to have a negative under the radical? Nope. So because that is negative, this is what I did right here. This is the discriminant. Oh, the I. What do we? How many? How many real solutions? No. How many real solutions? No solutions. Uh, bro. That is anticlimactic, isn't that it? Was so annoying. You get all the way down there <laughs> just to get no solutions. No, not really. Not unless you sketch the graph of both of them. No. But you could certainly tell at this point, right? There, there might be questions like this, yeah. What did you ask? Oh, maybe, maybe, yeah. That, I mean, that would be a good question, right? Yeah, you just look for the one with no points of intersection. So sometimes uh, we have to work really hard just to get uh, a result that is uh, kind of not very fulfilling. Yeah, but remember, it, it, uh, if you choose not to decide, you still have made a choice, right? So... Um, Good thing. Here, here's here's why I'm rejoicing at this point that there's no solutions. Because imagine if these were two conjugate solutions, I would have to plug those each back in to find the y values. <laughs> so luckily, there's no solutions. Okay. Wait. So if there's two variables, that's like two tangent points, right? If there's two solutions, there's two points of intersection. Yeah. Is that what you mean? No, the question says how many solutions are possible when solving a linear quadratic system in two variables? Oh, in two variables means x and y. So yeah. So it'd be it'd be none none one and two. Yeah. Just the, the number of possible. So I I and I I I. All right, we're we're done. So you can try the homework. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me. I'll be right back. Yes. That is a very important message. I hope you forwarded it to your loved